Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. For those new here, my name is Nikki. I'm an author and editor and I post videos here on YouTube about writing, editing, reading and all the other things I love. And reading is the what word of the day because it's time for my end of the month reading wrap up. So I've got quite a few books I got through again this month so I'm going to crack straight on uh, without any further ado. The first one I read was The Monsters We Deserve by Marcus Sedgwick and this was a net galley read and it was a four star read for me. Uh, it was a really interesting idea and it's, it's kind of based very loosely on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and an author has gone off into a secluded cabin in order to write a piece based on Frankenstein, um, a book he doesn't actually like all that much. And uh, along the way some strange things happen and he has some sort of weird meetings with different people and I won't say more than that because I don't want to spoil it. It was a really interesting idea, um, presented some interesting thoughts on the creative process and who owns an idea and when do ideas take on a life of their own. Um, ultimately it got four stars for me because I don't think it 100% um, worked. It was very interesting but it's not one that I thought, oh wow this was amazing, I'd want to read it again. Next up, uh, Here and Now and Then by Mike Chen. This was a five star read for me. Um, this is a debut author. Um, really loved his work, apologies, that's my phone going off. Um, it's a time travel story essentially. Um, we meet Kin, who's a time travel agent. His job is to go back in time and fix things if people are trying to uh, change history or do anything dubious. However, one mission he ends up getting trapped there. His device to get him back doesn't work. And he ends up stuck there, what in his time seems like a couple of weeks, but for him is 18 years. Um, and during that time he gives up all hope of rescue and starts a family. And so then we have the issue that they want to take him home and he's torn between wanting to go back to the life he knew with the life that he's created now with this wife and daughter he's got. Especially when it turns out that they're in danger because they, they shouldn't exist because he shouldn't have been there to begin with. So there's a bit of action, um, a bit of a, a sort of adventure story involved, but also looking at family relationships, particularly the father-daughter relationship. Um, it was really gripping, great fun, the time travel elements worked really well. Uh, I never found myself questioning anything, and like whether it, whether it was working, whether that could happen. Um, it was totally well written that I accepted everything, and I definitely read more from this author. So as I said, five star read, that one. And next up, another net galley, Escaping Exile by Sarah Doby Bauer. Uh, this was a three and a half star read for me. Um, it was a fun short read, though I kind of questioned why it wasn't longer. Um, essentially, we have a, um, a vampire who's been trapped on this desert island, and then a, a young man also becomes stranded there, and they form a relationship, and they're sort of, it's them against the cannibals, the native cannibals. Um, and I liked their relationship, I liked the story idea, but I kind of felt that I wanted more background, I wanted to get to know them a little bit better, and I, I do feel it would have worked better in a slightly longer format with a little bit more time spent on their building their relationship. Next up, um, yet another net galley, um, A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. Uh, this is a five star read for me. Now this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, and it's a retelling in a sort of way fantasy setting. Um, that blends a fantasy world with our own world. So um, Harper, the, the main girl, who's the Belle character, she is from our, our reality and she ends up stuck in the fantasy world where there's this curse and Prince Wren um, is afflicted by it and it's whether she can save him and save his kingdom. Um, it was a really great storytelling. I loved Wren and Harper as characters. And it's definitely one that uh, I loved every minute and I'm keen to turn the page all the time. So if you're into fairy tale retellings like Beauty and the Beast stories, definitely check out that one. Another net galley read, Death Days by Leah Cooper. Uh, this was a three star read for me. And the reason for that was I loved the premise. And the premise was uh, a necromancer. And he's also a university professor who's got a bit of a crush on his TA. And I loved the setup. I thought the premise was interesting. However, the story kind of changed focus a little way midway through and um, it had just had a few issues with um, the pacing and I just wanted a little bit more characterisation at times, um, particularly on um, some of the secondary characters. We didn't really get to know them very well. And I, again, I thought it was just a brilliant idea, um, and it could have, but it just could have been a little bit better. 
So uh, next up, another net galley. Uh, we're still going with the net galley. Uh, the Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve to to Colk. I hope I'm saying that right. To Cholk and could be. Um, we'll pronounce it however we want. To Colk, to Cholk, something like that. Uh, three and a half stars. Anyway, this is billed as a retelling of Beowulf, and I could see that. I could get where that was coming from. However, it really did its own thing quite a bit as well. It's a YA fantasy. I felt the issues here were with the pacing. It was very slow and a lot of the stuff that happened I kind of felt could have been over with quicker. Whereas when they actually got to the end and like what should have been the big finale, it was a little bit too quick. Um, but I liked the ideas. I liked the idea of the mercies as these um, mercy assassins who you can hire if you're old and decrepit or you're, you're suffering a terrible illness that you know you can't recover from and you want a quick swift end then you can hire them to do that for you. Uh, I liked that idea and I liked a lot of the world building as well. It was just just the pacing really that um, let it down. Um, particularly considering that this book um, they're making a big point out of how it was bid on by six publishers and everyone wanted to publish it and I kind of expected I think based on that promotion of it I expected something amazing and I just got something good. And the next one, another net galley read, Invitation to a Bonfire by Adrian Selt or Kelt, however we're pronouncing that one. Um, four and a half stars this one. Uh, this was a really spellbinding tale. Um, one of the things I loved about it was um, great pacing as opposed to the previous one I mentioned. Um, wonderful characterizations. and this story is it's really a character piece, I'd say, and it's about uh, relationships. And if you like that a sort of uh, real contemporary drama, then um, this is one to take a look at. Next up, uh, another another review read, but this one was actually from Thistle Publishing, which I was sent a PDF um, separate from NetGalley. Death in Paris by Amelia Bernhard, and this was a three and a half star read for me. This is a cute mystery. Now I've never a cosy mystery. Um, they've ne I've never read any of these before, but I keep seeing them everywhere lately, and so many people seem to love them. So when they offered me, I, I underlined a little bit, but in the end I thought, no, I'll give it a try just to see what all the fuss is about. And it was really cute. Uh, it was a cute story. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, the pacing worked fine. Um, it kept me guessing a little bit about the murderer, but by about the sort of three quarter mark, I pretty much knew who'd done it. The main issue I had that I didn't mark it higher was that for me there wasn't enough tension. Um, I didn't think the stakes were high enough. It's like, did it really matter if they found the murderer or not? To me, no, not really. Um, and that may be, because I'm not used to these cute mysteries or cosy mysteries, it may just be that that's how they all are. I'm, I'm not sure, perhaps if someone has read a few more can tell me in the comments below. But I think, it just for me, I wanted a bit more tension, higher stakes, to feel a bit more on the edge of my seat, which I never really did. And next up, back to Net Galley for The Witches of St. Petersburg by Imogen Edward Jones. This is a four star read for me. Now, this is a Rasputin retelling essentially. Um, there's been plenty of versions of Rasputin's story over the years, and this one is done from the point of view of uh, two minor princesses who apparently are the ones who introduced uh, Rasputin to the court at St. Petersburg. And I liked that. I thought it was an interesting premise. Um, I did find the girls a little bit stupid at times, the way they were portrayed, which was a little bit annoying. I kind of wanted them to be a little bit more sensible, but then I guess if they had been, they wouldn't have done all the things they did that led to all the problems with Rasputin. But uh, it was a nice historical drama. If you're into historical pieces that are based loosely on fact, then um, you'll probably want to check this one out. Next up was another of the Thistle Publishing um, review copies, Three Men on Their Bikes by Richard Mapes. This is a four star read for me. Uh, it's kind of a contemporary coming of age, in terms of coming of middle age, I guess you'd say. Um, three friends in their early 30s and they used to have a really strong friendship but it kind of feels like life's getting in the way for them lately, um, what with work and relationships, marriages, and they decide to try and rebond over a cycling holiday in Yorkshire, even though none of them have ever cycled before. So there's plenty of humour along the way um, with their terrible attempts at cycling, but it's also quite thought-provoking looking at how the relationships change as we get older. 
and when we reach that point in our 30s, which I'm at, so I, I totally understood the story from that point of view, that you sort of feel like, what have I done, what have I accomplished, is this the way I expected my life to be going? So it's, it's thought provoking, but also great fun. And next up, another net galley read, Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. And this is a five star read for me. So uh, this is actually the sequel to Strange the Dreamer, which I also loved. So it's a continuation of that story. We get to see uh, what's happening with Strange and the others. And um, it's interesting because it, it does conclude in a way that could be the end, but it also leaves it open that maybe Lainey Taylor will write more in that world later. So um, I quite liked that. It was, it was conclusive enough that I felt I could close the book without being annoyed at cliffhangers, but it is open that maybe there'll be more one day. So uh, it's an excellent sequel, um, just as good as the first book. Um, I love the pacing, love the characters still, and just a really delightful read. Next up was Zlodejček by Petra Barkovets. Uh, this is a book I read in Czech, which I picked up while I was in London uh, back late last year for practice essentially. I don't get a lot of chance to practice my languages since I moved to Australia, so I take a chance wherever I can. And while I was in Foyles, the wonderful bookshop in London that has a beautiful foreign language section, um, which I adore, I could have bought the whole shop, um, I picked up a few books and this was one of them. The reason I picked this one was because it looks like a, a sort of series of vignettes rather than a novel, which I thought would make it easier to read because my check is pretty sitting somewhere around the basic to intermediate. Uh, I'm probably pushing towards intermediate in terms of being able to um, follow the grammar, but in terms of vocabulary I probably need to do a bit of work to get, get myself back up to the intermediate level. And that's the main problem that I had with this book in the end, because it was fairly poetic and there were plenty of times when I didn't know a word and I was trying to look it up and it wasn't in my dictionary. And so it did cause me more problems, I think, than if I'd picked a novel, um, which probably would have been a bit more standard language. So, I mean, I gave it three stars for now. However, I do say that that probably is a little bit unfair on the book, and that probably reflects my ability to read it. I kind of got the gist of it, but I felt I was missing out a lot on not being able to really understand uh, the deeper thoughts in what he was saying. So that's something I might come back to. I've put it back on my shelf. And, you know, if I keep practicing at my check and come back to it in a few years, maybe I'll have a, a better understanding of it. Next up, we're back to NetGalley for Bob Languish's World of Horses by Bob Languish. Uh, I gave this three and a half stars. Now, this is a book of horse photography, which um, I love horses. Um, I've only read, uh, uh, sorry, I've read, I've only ridden one once, uh, but I adored it and I love the idea of horses and I'd love to have another go if I get the opportunity in the future. And so I thought, well, I'm going to check this out. And it was a nice collection. I liked the way it was set out in different uh, areas. So rather than by breed or something, um, it would be like coastal pictures or, you know, on the plains or things like that. However, the thing that let this down for me was no Iceland. It was meant to be the world of horses. And Iceland has a very particular brand of horses. Um, they're quite unique. And yet there wasn't a single photo of those in the book which kind of made me scratch my head a little bit. Um, and also, as someone who likes horses but doesn't know a lot about them, I would have really appreciated just a little glossary at the back, just explaining the different breeds a little bit, perhaps, just some of their key characteristics. I think that just would have elevated the book a bit to make it accessible for sort of people who enjoy horses but aren't that um, au fait with all the terminology and things like that. So, three and a half stars anyway. Next up, The Art and Craft of Chocolate by Nathan Hodge, another net galley read. This was four and a half stars for me. It was really interesting. Uh, it's a fascinating book that basically looked at the history of chocolate um, in terms of its discovery and its acceptance into Western culture. It also went through in great detail um, the manufacturing process, including how to make chocolate from scratch from the beans at home. If you are so inclined, it looked a little bit too much hard work to me, but um, it's there for if anyone wants to have a go. And at the end it had some fun recipes, um, of which I did make a note of a couple, um, but I might try. So uh, all up, very a fun read, and if you're a chocolate fan, it's, it was a really nice overview book that covered all the aspects, really, of chocolate. And still sticking with NetGalley for Equilibrium, Superpowered Love Number 1 by Katie Hawthorne. This was a three-star read for me, um, so it's about people with uh, superpowers, 
and they're living in a world where they kind of have to keep their powers secret and there are two friends both with different powers and it's one of those friends to lovers kind of relationships however for me I felt that there was a huge amount of sex which it doesn't bother me having sex in the book if it's going to add something but I didn't think it always added to the development of the characters or to the plot and I did feel that the plot got left by the wayside a little bit at times in favour of sex. I would have liked to have seen a little less sex and a little more plot um, balance uh, which is why I gave it three stars. And it, it had some really good points and I did like the characters and I liked the idea it's just I, I felt it could have come together a little bit better. And number five, uh, number five, I'm saying number five because I'm looking at the five star mark next to it. Just ignore me, I'm just talking nonsense. Next up, I should say, from NetGalley again, Crochet 101 by Deborah Berger, which, as I just mentioned, was a five star read for me. I've been thinking about having a go at crochet for a little while now, and I saw this book on NetGalley and decided maybe this would help me make my mind up, and I thought it was an excellent book. A really great beginner's guide. I liked the way it was laid out, really easy to follow instructions. I really appreciated how it taught you a stitch and then gave you a little project to try. Because I am someone who I like to be able to see how I'm getting on. And just having a book telling you all the stitches and then leaving you to it is not going to work for me. I like the idea of being able to make something and then learn something new and make something with that new bit of information. Uh, so you kind of feel you're making progress and you can actually have something to show for it at the end of the day. The book also features a link to some videos which is super helpful actually because sometimes the stitches you're trying to imagine it from the way it's described and with the pictures but actually seeing it done on the video uh, makes it all the easier. And I liked this book so much that I actually went out and ordered myself a copy which should arrive in the mail any day now. So I have made one little item already uh, where I found a free pattern online but once the book arrives I'll have a look at the um, projects in the book again and try one or two of those. Next up is a print book that I bought myself, and it's The Razor's Edge by Somerset Maugham. Um, I really love Somerset Maugham, and I, I haven't actually read a lot of his stuff yet. I'd only read a couple um, before this one, so they are very much on my radar to read more, and I enjoyed this one. It was four and a half stars. Um, it really is beautifully crafted po um, prose. It's a character piece, and uh, most of the story is really about getting to know the characters. Um, there is a plot, but... Uh, it really is about um, looking at all these different people in society at the time. So uh, if you've read uh, of Human Bondage or Painted Veil, um, then you'll love this one as well. I didn't think it was my favourite, which is why I gave it four and a half stars. I think I prefer those other two I mentioned. But I did still really enjoy this. It was quite a page turner. So I'm excited to read more Somerset Morn in the future. Next up, Cross Stitch, The Essential Practical Collection by Dorothy Wood. Um, again, uh, this is one I bought a copy of in a bargain store and I gave it uh, four stars. It's um, a really nice practical guide. The only problem I had with it that made me give it four and not five stars is that the way the project's um, patterns were included in the book made it really hard to be able to copy them. You'd have to really bend the book back and then risk all the pages falling out to be able to photocopy them or even to be able to see them clearly while you were trying to work, you'd have to wreck the spine essentially of the book. And I felt it would have worked better if they'd all been collected together at the back, um, not necessarily as a pull out, but at least um, centred on the pages and in the back of the book so that you weren't having to bend right in the middle of the book and that trying to get to them. Next up, another bought one, uh, Fever Dream by George R. R. Martin. And this is George R. R. Martin's vampire story. I gave this five stars. Um, I loved the uh, feel of it. It's very southern gothic. Um, they're on a river boat and there was a great atmosphere. Uh, I really loved the characters. Um, the plotting was good, the pacing was excellent and as I said just this brilliant um, sense of the, of the place and of the atmosphere and everything that was happening. It was quite a, a sort of visceral story if you like uh, which I loved. And next up a review copy that I received from the author Elixir of Flight, uh, which is the second Flyer Chronicles book by Alina Popescu, and this was a four star read for me. Uh, it's a really nice continuation from book one, and uh, for those who don't know, this series is a sort of sci-fi take on angels. Um, it's probably the easiest way to describe it, and we really sort of set up the story in book one. This one is a nice continuation, and for the first time we've left Earth and we've gone out into space, and in many ways this book was 
more about the history of the flyers, who are the, the angel type characters. So there wasn't quite as much relationship development for our two leads because one of them was unconscious for most of the book. But we got some awesome history on the flyers and I think that's set up really beautifully now for the third story um, and I'm keen to see what will happen then. So four stars as I said. And finally, the last one we've got there, Tea and Coffee in the Time of Dr Johnson. Um, this is a book that my parents picked up for me when I went to the Dr Johnson House Museum in London recently and sent through the post for me. And uh, it's basically a collection of essays by different authors looking at the um, introduction of tea and coffee uh, in England and um, different thoughts on it that were prevalent in the 18th century. So I found it really interesting. Um, Four star read, uh, learnt a few new things, um, it was well worth having a look. So if you're interested in tea and coffee in Georgian England, um, it's definitely worth checking out. So that brings me to the end, um, as I said it's been a bumper month, I'm actually really really close to finishing my Goodreads goal for the year. I will definitely be finishing it in September, so I'll talk about it again then. But uh, for now I will close and I will see you all again. Um, in a few weeks time for some more vlogs and at the end of next month for another one of these Nikki's new reads. Bye for now everyone.